The story of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions revolves around a mystical artifact known as the Tablet of Order and Chaos. At the beginning of the game, the tablet gets shattered and sent through multiple dimensions. Each fragment of the tablet holds great power. Unfortunately for Spider-Man, it ends up in the wrong hands. What each Spider-Man have to do is fight the supervillains who end up with a piece of the tablet. We were sitting in my office one day and we were discussing what we could do for the next step in the Spider-Man franchise. At some point we stumbled upon a picture of Spider-Man 2099 and it was like, oh, is that a bad guy? No, no, that's his Spider-Man. We started looking at different versions of Spider-Man and somebody in the team came to us and said, there are a lot of great possibilities out there, I'd like to play them all. And we were like, play them all? That's genius! So that's basically how it started. For the four different worlds we went with four different teams. Each team was responsible for one dimension. In our game, you have amazing Spider-Man with all his web-based attacks and crazy web acrobatics. Since Spider-Man 2099 has web foils right next to his arms, we've inspired ourselves by base jumpers. He has lighting mechanics so he can throw himself down buildings. We have Ultimate. He wears the black suit. That gives him a bit of an edge. He enters rage mode that blasts everything around him. Noir is completely different. Now we slow down the pace. We really get into the stealth aspect of being a spider. Spider-Man will have to navigate through the shadows and take down the enemies one by one. The supervillains really play a key role in the experience. Sandman will be able to create sand creatures. You're gonna first encounter him pretty much the same size as Spider-Man, and as you progress through the game, he becomes this huge tornado. Carnage will be able to create copies of him that will attack Spider-Man. We have Deadpool can multiply himself. Hammerhead will eventually fuse with his own weapon, so he'll become sort of like a walking tank. He's gonna try to find you with his Gatling gun. You have to hide from the spots and everything to take him down from behind. Vulture as well, completely completely different pacing. It's much more stealthy approach. You have Scorpion, he lays eggs and there will be mini scorpion creatures that will spawn from those eggs and attack you. The art style is really different from the other because it's the most futuristic part of the game. The art team did an amazing job and we really wanted to complement all those graphics uh, with the audio. When the enemy is walking, you can hear his footstep, uh, you can hear the gun's movement when he's searching for Spider-Man. It's cool, but also it's, it's really helpful for the gameplay to, to, to know where the enemy is. If the boss takes you by surprise, you'll get into first-person action. You'll have a chance to beat up the villain up close and personal, and it's just like, boom! Animating the villains was kind of a big deal because there are a lot. And I mean, time schedule is pretty short, so you have to know what you want. And at the end, it's the, the good result. So if I had to choose which one I'm the closest to, I would probably have to pick Ultimate. I think I'll go with Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. Basically, I think because I'm a classic person. Probably Ultimate, just because of the pacing and everything. Definitely Spider-Man Ultimate. Personally, I'm Noir. But I can also say 2099 because he's so cool looking. We have four different universes, 13 bosses, the player feels that it's always different. The art styles, the combat, the gameplay stuff, it's just gonna blow you away.